Cardiomyopathy translates to heart muscle disease. So cardiomyopathy is a broad term used to describe a variety of issues that result from disease of the myocardium, or heart muscle. When cardiomyopathy develops as a way to compensate for some other underlying disease like hypertension or valve diseases, it's called secondary cardiomyopathy. But when it develops all by itself, it's called a primary cardiomyopathy. Restrictive cardiomyopathy is where the heart muscle is restricted, meaning it becomes stiffer and less compliant. The muscles and size of the ventricles, though, stay about the same, or maybe they only get slightly enlarged. Normally, when blood fills into the ventricles, they're compliant, so they stretch out and allow more blood to fill in. When blood fills into restricted ventricles, though, they aren't allowed to expand. So stiffer, less compliant ventricles means that the ventricles can't stretch, and less blood fills into the ventricle, which means the heart starts to fail to pump out enough blood to the body. So restrictive cardiomyopathy causes heart failure, and since filling happens during diastole, we say this is a type of diastolic heart failure. Now several mechanisms can lead to stiffer heart muscles and restrictive cardiomyopathies. One of these is amyloidosis. Amyloids are proteins that have been misfolded, and once misfolded they become insoluble and can deposit in various tissues and organs, making them less compliant. Familial amyloid cardiomyopathy is a genetic disorder where mutant transthyroidin protein, or TTR, is misfolded and prone to depositing in the heart tissue. TTR is a protein that usually circulates in the blood and helps transport thyroxine and retinol. And mutations in TTR are more common in African Americans. Similarly, senile cardiac amyloidosis is where, over time, wild type, or normal, TTR deposits in the heart, and this is typically seen in the elderly. Sarcoidosis is another cause that involves the formation of granulomas in the heart tissue, which are these collections of immune cells. Yet another is endocardial fibroelastosis, where fibrosis develops in the endocardium, the inner lining of the heart, as well as the subendocardium right under, again making the tissue less compliant. Endocardial fibroelastosis happens most often in children, and it's thought to be caused by a variety of diseases and stresses, like infections and even nutritional deficiencies. Leffler syndrome, where eosinophils accumulate in the lung tissue, can also affect the heart tissue, called Leffler endocarditis, or sometimes Leffler endomyocarditis. In this case, eosinophils accumulate in the endocardial layer of the heart tissue, causing inflammation and endocardial fibrosis, making it stiffer and again, less compliant. Also, with hemochromatosis, or iron overload, iron can deposit in the heart tissue, which contributes to restricted ventricular filling. Finally, radiation of the heart tissue can also lead to restrictive cardiomyopathy, and it's thought that this is because radiation generates reactive oxygen species in the tissue, which ultimately leads to inflammation over time, and causes myocardial fibrosis, or fibrosis of the heart muscle tissue, which makes the tissue stiffer and more restrictive. For diagnosis, sometimes an electrocardiogram or ECG can be helpful, and these people will often have low amplitude signals and smaller QRS complexes due to restricted ventricular contraction. The treatment for restrictive cardiomyopathy will be to treat the underlying cause, if possible. For example, treating hemochromatosis by removing excess iron. In a lot of cases, though, the definitive treatment is heart transplant, 